Welcome to the shortwave radio channel and this is another tips and tricks for all of you out there that don't understand the uh, shortwave hobby very well. A lot of us, you know, we all been there, been newbies and, you know, kind of uh, never didn't know about a lot of stuff. Uh, one of the aspects of the shortwave radio hobby that's quite unique is also the uh, propagation of signals that are dependent on a very interesting factor the sun the sun is of course uh, giving us some uh, radiation and that is what actually creates the ionosphere and that what is in fact uh, helping shortwave signals propagate but the sun isn't always the same it has cycles and it has sometimes more output Sometimes it goes a little hangry and shoots a solar flare at us. Uh, sometimes it's just, you know, coronal holes that have solar wind uh, that increases and that creates problems with shortwave propagation. Uh, unlike AM, FM signals, you might notice that shortwave signals are there one day and might not be there the next day. It is part of the hobby and your radio is not broken. It's due to probably to some in some way to the solar activity solar activity has a direct impact on what we hear at the peak of the solar cycles when they are the uh, solar flux is really high that we get more signals from different areas we get uh, you know higher frequencies that propagate uh, at the low part of solar cycles we are right now at solar minimum well low solar flux means very lower frequencies are actually propagating uh, it means higher frequencies might not propagate and um, so having a page like this page for example to look at what's happening is an interesting uh, page because it might help you understand and as you watch to that page and listen to the propagation of signals you might actually notice that you know get to notice what actually makes the solar uh, conditions, what kind of solar conditions uh, has problems with, for example, your radio listening. Um, the most important numbers in this page are, of course, the solar flux, which is SFI. You see it on the left side as 68 right now, which means that, you know, this is low. Solar flux goes from 60 to 400. So we're at the bottom here. This is very low output. That means we're at the bottom of solar um, activity and it still doesn't mean that it's bad a lot of people put the low solar activity equals bad propagation together not really yes higher frequencies tend to propagate when solar flux gets higher certain signals might be stronger honestly some of the best DX I've ever done was at slower solar minimum so when people correlate solar minimum I'm gonna turn off the radio you don't know what you're talking about and you don't actually have real experience of all of this um, I actually listen a lot uh, lately and there are a lot of signals out there to listen to uh, even though we're at solar minimum the other number and the one that impacts probably the most in a quick way because solar flux doesn't change that much from day to day except when sunspots appear or disappear, but most of the time it doesn't have a huge impact. What will have a huge impact, because it's you know, the solar flux is honestly something on the long term, more than uh, on the short term of one day or two. The K index, and you've got a graph on the right side here, and let's bring it up just to show you guys. So this is the K index. This is a, the, a much more important indicator of what's happening. So here you see that there are some red bars, yellow bars, and green bars to make it simple. You want it to be green. So if you're in the green, and like right now we're August 7th, so the last measure is green, usually it's not too bad. Usually you want to have it, you know, green and the lowest amount of green possible. So if it could be at zero, great. If it's at one like it is right now, it's perfect. Um, this indicates that propagation shouldn't be too bad. When it gets to yellow or red, the K index is an indication of the geomagnetic field of our planet. When this actually gets higher, our geomagnetic field gets unsettled, unsettled or even to storm levels, 
This has a tendency to increase the absorption of signals in the ionosphere. That means the signals you hear might not be there or be weaker than usual. Uh, but it's not all bad. Sometimes it has weird effects where it enhances some types of propagation. But to make it simple, because I don't want to, this is not a course of solar activity, you want this to stay green. So when it's green, it's not bad. If you try to listen to your favorite station that you've been listening for the past week, and one day it's not there or it's very weak, take a, take a look at this uh, website. Maybe you'll notice that it's become yellow or red. The K index has increased. So absorption might have increased also. I know these are complex concept but they are important to grasp and slowly understand if you want to have the maximum of uh, knowledge and know when some signals are available and when propagation could be good or bad and of course like I said it's not a problem with your radio if you enjoy our videos please subscribe give us thumbs up thank you for watching